Hello, my name is Chris, and I am an engineer here at Acromag. Due to the proliferation of high-speed buses and various power requirements in BPX systems, they are no longer the plug-and-play systems that we are used to in BME. Today, I'm going to give you seven questions to determine if Acromag's BPX 4810 carrier is compatible with your system. Before we begin, you're going to need to gather data sheet and manuals on your BPX backplane, processor card, and the chassis. For those of you familiar with the Vita 65 or Open BPX, Acromag's VPX4810 product line is compatible with the module and the corresponding slot profiles shown here. If you know your system is compatible with these profiles, then you're good to go. If not, then here are the seven questions you need to ask. Question 1. Do you have a 3U backplane? Unlike VPX predecessor VME, you better have the same size backplane as plug-in module. 6U backplanes are not compatible with Acromag's 3U VPX4810 series due to differences in power supply voltages. As you can see, the VS1 and VS2 rails aren't even close. While I'm not 100% sure why the standard designers chose this approach, I can guarantee you that plugging in the BPX4810 3U card into a 6U black plane will result in permanent damage. Question 2. What type of cooling or pitch does your chassis support? The BPX standard provides for several different cooling mythologies, which affects the metalwork and pitch, or the distance between the slots, of the board. While there are several choices, Acromag does have a board to fit your needs. You just have to select the correct one. The first is an air-cooled version of the BPX4810, the base model. This 0.8 inch thick board is designed to work in pretty much any chassis. It includes an injection latch for easy removal and supports both front and rear I.O. The second is a conduction cooled VPX 4810 CC. This 0.85 inch pitch board is designed to work with conduction cooled chassis and conduction cooled XMC and PMC modules. This board does not support front I.O. The third board is a VPX 4810 Ready. This board is Vita 48 Ruggedized Enhanced Design Implementation, or READY, compliant with level 2 maintenance support. This 1 inch pitch product is designed to only fit in READY chassis. So be sure you choose the correct Acromag product for your system. Question 3. Does your system provide enough power? A simple and easily overlooked question. The, VPT, the VPX4810 series requires up to a maximum of 3.2 amps of 3.3 volts and 5 volt power. You must add this with the XMC and PMC power requirements as well as all other system components to determine if your supply is large enough. Also note that if any of your XMC or PMC modules require plus or minus 12 volts, then these voltages will have to be present on the back plane. Question 4. Does the processor board, or SBC, support PCI Express on the data plane? Acromag's VPX4810 communicates to the host via either four lanes, a fat pipe, or eight lanes, a double fat pipe, PCIe connection. The processor board must support PCIe, which is indicated by VITA 46.4 compliance, and support the proper number of lanes. <clears throat> if not enough lanes are available, or a different communication protocol is used, then a switch will be required. Question 5. Are you using a switch? A VPX switch gives you the capability of expanding the root bus and or changing between various communication protocols. If you are using a switch, then it must support either a 4-lane or 8-lane PCI Express connection. Question 6. Is the P2 VPX connector reserved for rear I.O.? The P2 connector must only you use for, for rear I.O. and not any other backplane connections. The VPX specification does not specifically reserve these pins for rear I.O. and the backplane could use them to route other signals. The PMC J4 rear I.O. connector is routed directly to the VPX P2 backplane connector and any bus connections on the backplane could result in signal contention. Once again, for those of you who know your VPX specs, you will need a backplane that supports VITA 46.9, P2, 
P2W1-P64S P2 connections. Question 7. Is there a PCIe path to Acromax board? Here is where you take the information gathered from the last three questions and map out your PCIe lanes on your black plane to determine if there is a connection between your processor board and Acromag's VPX4810 plug-in module. Remember that VPX replaced the parallel bus in VME with a point-to-point -point bus architecture. Therefore, each and every card must have a connection to the host processor. Mapping out your connections is best done using good old-fashioned pencil and paper. First, find the interconnection diagram of your VPX backplane, as well as the requirements of all your other system cards. Then determine if you can get it all to work in the system. A simple example connection diagram is shown here. Further information on mapping the PCIe routing and other topics touched on here can be found in Acromag's tech paper Will Acromag's VPX4810 work in my system? This, as well as a wealth of information on VPX and our other products, can be found on our website at www.acromag.com. Thanks for watching.